The following is brought to you by Esports Jamaica. There are times when I look out for and pick up a game based on facts. I may have played early installments of the game, I may have read or watched several glowing reviews, I may have played a demo, things like that. Then there are games like Onrush, Trackmania Turbo, Fast Racing Neo and Grip Combat Racing where I simply got them because the pictures and videos look so appealing. Yeah, sometimes I go real shallow. If a game looks a particular way, I really don't care what the reviewers say. I'll get it and find out the negatives the hard way. Did Grip disappoint? Grip Combat Racing didn't really disappoint. As much as I love the way it looked, I didn't go into this with unrealistically high expectations. It's an empty game with not much more to offer than what I saw in preview videos leading up to the actual launch. You know, I actually got more than I bargained for because there was one constant with all the videos I saw. The game is called Combat Racing, but I saw no combat. What I did see was lots of gameplay videos with just one car driving along a track. Now I'll have to admit, I still expected more combat than what I got here, but there is some, just not enough in my opinion. Maybe if they called it grip racing, you know, without the combat, it would have been less misleading. Grip offers a campaign mode among others, and as uninteresting as this mode is, as bland and void of character as this mode is, it's what I jumped into first, as the other modes had zero appeal. And up to the time of this review, I was unable to get an online game going. And when I did try the arena style mode, well, let's just say arena combat, vehicular style, was never my thing and that has not changed. My first foray into such a thing was with cell damage for the GameCube and I only played it then because it was, I think, one of my first and only games for the cube. But no, driving around in circles crashing into the same cars over and over is as much fun as watching grass grow. The campaign mode feels so empty, it has zero personality, it almost feels lonely. Now, I know racing games are not sold on how great their campaigns are, and many racing games I've played in the past, the stories they've tried to shoehorn in, many times feel like nothing more than window dressing, and sometimes gets in the way of the meat of the matter. But this campaign is so dull, there's no story, no rhyme, no reason, you just keep driving these odd vehicles against other oddities, try to come out on top while doing everything in your limited capacity to give your opponent a warm time. Adding to the bland story are the equally bland visuals. I've seen videos of this game on other platforms, it looks considerably better elsewhere. But the Switch version does not impress, a doctor otherwise. And the track designs do not help. Some of these tracks just feel like you're driving through a giant pile of rubble. You'll be making your way through, feeling all accomplished and whatnot, then bam, you end up tossing, turning and spinning, not sure what the hell just happened. Then the music. This sounds like someone with very little musical knowledge just opened up an app like Fruity Loops and did a thing. Trust me, I've been there and done that DIY crap myself, I know what I'm talking about. As you progress through this repetitive boring experience, you unlock new vehicles, new weapons and upgrades. But this upgrade and unlock system also feels empty. There doesn't seem to be an actual customization system in place. It seems to me that what you do as you progress is unlock new vehicles that have varying attributes. So you may unlock a vehicle that has better armor, handling or acceleration than the one you had before. But it's not the kind of race where you can stick to one vehicle for as long as you like and continue to trick it out until you're ready to move on for whatever reason. And I would think that with a racer like this, such options would be a major plus. It would be obvious. Putting various weapons on it and so on. But instead, we have this Mario Kart style thing where you grab random temporary weapon upgrades and boosts while racing. This doesn't have a kart racer vibe to it and should have been handled accordingly. While playing grip, and I guess I can't speak for kids, ladies or other persons with small hands, the Joy-Cons are not the way to go. 
Playing this game with a Joy-Con as a separate controller or connected to the console in portable mode feels noticeably uncomfortable. I only felt right playing this game with a Pro Controller. I honestly do not believe I could have completed this review properly otherwise. The game is called Grip, so I get it. The whole inversion thing, drive upside down any which way is expected, but at first, it took a lot of getting used to. Once you get the hang of it though, you will feel like a boss. There's a bit of rubber banding, but it kind of swings both ways, regardless of the difficulty you're playing on, as the game feels very forgiving, generally. When you crash, which you will, a lot, all hope is not lost. You don't have to keep starting over. There is still a chance you'll catch up with the others and come out on top, assuming you're able to maintain a steady pace without crashing again. Once you manage to work past the first few races in campaign, the game will start to pick up steam. You'll begin to get power-ups on the track that are more than just speed boosts. You'll begin to get weapons, some more effective than others. You'll even have the ability to shield yourself from incoming attacks from behind. You'll begin to feel a whole lot more in control. And you also get the impression that there is more to this game. But then you'll notice a trend emerging. You're racing on the same tracks over and over. Now because like I said, these tracks aren't that impressive to begin with, this repetition becomes a bit of a chore. At first you may not realize they're just the same handful of tracks, but it will dawn on you that they are. Just minor variations like night and day. Grip combat racing isn't all bad, and I know this review makes it seem that way. It's just not that good either. It's the kind of game in my opinion that should never have been released at anything above $20 in the eShop. It can be fun in short bursts. It can make you feel like a bit of a badass sometimes, but it can also piss you off to no end. With poorly designed tracks and unexpected crashes that leave you asking yourself what the hell just happened. And after you've started repeating the courses, after you've been through a certain number of vehicle types and the limited game modes and customization options, you might be left asking yourself what's the point. This is just not a very appealing game, with what's in my opinion very little reason to replay it after the first few hours. This is however just my opinion, you decide. Thanks for watching and thanks for playing. If you find my content interesting, feel free to like, sub, hit the notification bell or whatever else you can do. If it pissed you off, then take it out on those dislike and unsubscribe buttons. Either way, thanks for passing through, our game is never over.